Okay. Good morning, everyone. We cannot see you, but there are close to a thousand of you out there from every corner of Europe and truly far beyond. We see people from Australia, from Brazil, from Canada. That's, that's, really, that's really, truly awesome. Um, a very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you for joining us on what in Europe here in Netherlands is really a crisp spring Saturday after what must have been a very long week of virtual meeting for you. It's a testimony for your stamina and dedication. And of course, a very special welcome to the themselves from their busy schedules to be with us. We're deeply honored to have you with us. I'm Harry Verwijn, I'm the director of the Europeana Foundation, and I will be co-hosting this meeting with Schneska Kvartvlich Mihailovic, Secretary General of Europa Nostra. To all of you out there, if you have questions to our panelists later on, please share them with us. We'd like to hear that. I encourage you to ask them in the Q&A section, which you can find at the bottom of uh, your screen. Today is a special day because it marks the 70th anniversary of the Schumann Declaration. And I'd like to pause on this just for a moment because I believe this initiative was truly remarkable and still relevant for us today. So rewind to the early 1950s. Luckily, very few of us will remember the state of devastation that our continent must have been in in the aftermath of the Second World War. Millions of casualties, buildings shot to pieces, the economy in shambles. Now, Robert Schumann, a man born of German nationality, but naturalized as a Frenchman, on the other hand, was extremely familiar with these issues. He lived through both world wars and knew firsthand what stirs continental conflict. The Schumann Declaration was presented on the 9th of May, 1950. It proposed the creation of the European Coal and Steel Community, whose members would pool coal and steel production. He and his peers thought correctly that the key to our prosperity and well being lies in the merging of our economical and cultural interests. So, what is commemorable about the Schumann Declaration was not only that it was a bold attempt to solve one of the biggest issues of the 20th century, it was the keen psychological insight that we're a little flawed as human beings, that we therefore need to actively create the conditions through which we can successfully interact. Then we need to keep asking the question, what do you need that I find important as well? Now that was 70 years ago, the span of a single lifetime. Inspired by the vision and audacity of Robert Schumann and his peers, we now argue that we should seize the current crisis to put culture and cultural heritage where they belong right at the heart of the European revival. We can imagine many ways in which cultural heritage can act as a positive force in the forthcoming process of Europe's recovery. So as a thought starter for the discussion, let me name you a few. It is often said, but all too easily overlooked, that cultural heritage enables us to embrace our diversity. We tend to fall in love with people who share the same interests. You think Stephen Fry is one of the funniest people in the world? That's incredible, so do I. But love deepens and sustains only when we start appreciating the differences. You like Stephen Fry, but you don't like jazz? I can't believe it. But do tell me more about it. Embracing diversity is not something that comes to us naturally, yet absolutely necessary if we want to feel European at all. What may be a little bit less obvious to some is that cultural heritage also contributes very significantly to Europe's economy and provides jobs for millions of people, directly and indirectly. These are not coal mining jobs, jobs with a health hazard that are reaching the end of their life cycle, but jobs with a very clear 20th, 21st century perspective. Cultural heritage world was hit hard during this first phase of the crisis but it has reacted quickly and aptly. A recent survey by the Network of European Museum Organizations has shown that 60% of museums have increased their online activities in a matter of weeks during the pandemic. 
it clearly shows that we're willing and able to adapt to a changing environment. And this ability to change and innovate will be a much needed skill that we are facing as we are facing some very complex questions. How do we adapt to social distancing? How do we make our organizations carbon neutral? But also, how do we stay relevant in an age where we see the convergence of big data, parallel computing, and powerful algorithms? The world is changing so fast right now that half the jobs that we will need in the next 30 years do not even exist today. In that perspective, let's consider this. Close to a quarter of the people working in our museums, libraries, and archives are under the age of 29. So when we think about the regeneration of Europe, the potential of this pool of emerging creative leaders cannot be overestimated. I would argue that more than anything, cultural heritage can be seen as a testing ground, a lab for social and technological innovation. This is an area where Europe already is and is well positioned to stay a leader in the world. Let me single out one quote from the Schumann Declaration that struck me as particularly wise. It says, I quote, Europe will not be made all at once or according to a single plan. It will be built through concrete achievements, which first create a de facto solidarity. So what do we learn from this is that solidarity is not something that we can just expect or demand from others, that we that would be foolish to assume. But it is something that we can build through concrete activities that have mutual benefit. Schneska, we're extremely curious to hear the views of our panelists, so I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you, Harry. Good afternoon to all of you. Happy Europe Day. It is a great, great pleasure and honor uh, to be able to moderate together with Harry uh, this important Europe Day webinar. Um, Harry and I, we are in The Hague, uh, near the, by the North Sea, close to the tulip fields, uh, and we have a fantastic um, um, a group of uh, people, dedicated Europeans, who have joined us. And I would like now first to welcome all of them. First of all, Dobrodan Sofia. Very warm well welcome to our, Euro our European Commissioner, Maria Gabriel, who is with us from Sofia in Bulgaria. Then from Bulgaria, I go to Zagreb, Lepi Pozdrav Zagrebu, uh, to Minister Nina Obulen uh, Korzinek, who is the Croatian Minister of Culture and uh, who uh, is also the acting chair of the European Council of Ministers. Then from Zagreb, uh, I will uh, go, I will go, I will go to Finland. I will go to Anne Karja Leinen, uh, who is um, come, uh, speaking from, I think, Kerava City Council uh, in Finland and who is the chair of the um, committee of the uh, committee of the regions of the European Union in charge of uh, education, culture, innovation, uh, research, uh, and youth—all a very, very important issue as for our uh, conversation with that. From Finland, I would go to Torino. Buongiorno, Torino. Luca Jaye, president of the European Economic and Social Committee, uh, our dear friend and supporter for many, many years. Luca, great that you are with us. Uh, from uh, Torino, I am going to Berlin. Guten uh, Tag, Hermann Patzinger. Uh, very proud, our executive president, European Nostra's executive president, and uh, president of an important organization, Prussian Cultural Heritage Foundation. Hermann, great that you can be with us. From uh, Berlin, I would go to uh, La Compagne Francaise. I would go to Tiron Gardet. Very special welcome to Stéphane Bern, uh, renowned author, TV journalist. Uh, Stéphane, magnifique uh, que vous pouvez être avec nous également and uh, de la Compagnie Francaise, I would go to Aachen. Aachen, historic capital of Europe, the capital of Charlemagne. So wonderful to have uh, Sabine Verheyen, chair of the Culture and Education Committee of the European Parliament also with us. It's really, I, I'm so excited, excited to have the whole world connected here today to say that um, 
in the spirit of audacity of the Schumann Declaration, the time has come that we put culture and cultural heritage at the heart of the European project. And that we are not here to say uh, uh, how endangered we are, but we are here to say we are here to contribute to the future of Europe. And that is what is, in fact, including in this manifesto. I'm holding that manifesto in my hand. Uh, this is a paper version, but Harry, I think that you will make sure that all the participants who are connected in the chat, in the Q&A, you will have the link to this document, the Europe Day Manifesto, launched by uh, all the members of the European Heritage Alliance, 50 European and international networks uh, covering the wide field of cultural heritage. Many of them are in the audience, so greetings to all our fellow uh, members who have worked with us to produce this manifesto and to all of you who are there. So we really want, this is our manifesto, our to use it in the coming period. So, this was just uh, a short introduction, and I think we go to uh, hear the voices of our um, prestigious and, and very dear um, panelists. I will first go to Sofia, uh, and I would want to greet, uh, as I said, our commissioner. As you know, uh, Madam Gabriel, we have fought all very, uh, very strongly that you have culture in your title. You had culture in your heart, but it was important that you have it in your culture. And this is uh, the first occasion, I think, because of, of, of these trying times we're living, we can't be physically together, but you are going to address uh, the, the, the cultural and, and cultural heritage uh, um, uh, for professionals, volunteers, supporters. Uh, and uh, I would say you are the commissioner de l'Europe des coeurs et de l'Europe des talents. I'm quoting you because you have said that when you first spoke with the European Parliament. So um, I would like to uh, invite you to tell us in this particularly trying times, everybody's saying the unprecedented crisis, um, what is the role of the Europe of the hearts, Europe of the talents to get um, Europe overcome this crisis and uh, sort of ensure a better future for us all. Maria Gabriel, European Commissioner, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Sneska. Happy Europe Day. Uh, first of all, thanks you, thank you very much for inviting me and for giving me this opportunity to join you because we all address uh, the topic closest to our hearts, cultural heritage. And I would like really to thank you, Europa Nostra and Europeana, not only for organizing this, this event, but also for your timely, for your constant, tireless work to safeguard and promote cultural and natural heritage in the European Union. Because you know, uh, your dedication, your resilience are an aspiration for us all. So I would like also to thank the other speakers. I think that later in the discussion, we can enter a little bit more into detail. So I will use this opportunity to address uh, and to, to share with you some, some messages. First of all, Cultural heritage represents our history and our identity. It's the most solid bridge between our past, our present, and our future. And Europe Day and cultural heritage have many things in common. And I would like here to underline two of them, unity and solidarity. And as you already have put that in your manifesto, cultural heritage is a powerful catalyst together we want to build on the important achievements of our European year of cultural heritage. But now it's time to go to the next level. Because allow me to share with you that as a commissioner, for me, cultural heritage, it's not a sector. It's Europe's soul. It's our European values. And it's such, it should be mainstreamed in all European policies. And during the discussion, I will give some more concrete examples. Because our society, our European Union, are based on our common cultural heritage. It belongs to all of us. It is part of who we are. It is also a source of revenue for local communities via the development of tourism, for example, of unique and creative jobs that show the richness of Europe. Definitely, the COVID-19 outbreak has shaken our way of life. It has and will force us to rethink our way of life. 
this is also true for the European Union. And I think that we should pause for a moment, look at the legacy left by our cultural heritage and get inspired to make a new start based on Europe's hearts and talents. On my side, I will use this unique opportunity for the first time, we have research, innovation, culture, education, and youth under the same portfolio. One example, we are talking very often about the knowledge square based on education, research, innovation, and service to society. But the roots, it's our cultural heritage. Because cultural heritage is at the basis of the cohesion of the European continent. That's why for me today, during this Europe Day, it's important to say that now we need actions. Actions at least at three levels. First, to continue to show that we cherish our local roots, our soul, our identity. After, thanks to the innovation and the extraordinary performance of the creative and cultural sectors that they have shown us during this crisis, to continue to show our commitment for uniting and inclusive Europe. And after, with concrete perspectives, with European leadership, with solidarity and cultural diplomacy, to continue to build our better future together. So allow me to conclude with a quote of Jean Monnet. You know how he's important for our European project. He said, people do not change, if it is not out of necessity. And they only see the need in times of crisis. So yes, let's take this crisis as an opportunity to reaffirm the heart of our European project, culture and cultural heritage. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Maria, for the inspiring and engaging opening words. Um, so from um, uh, Sofia, I would now like to uh, go to Berlin. Um, I would like to reach out to Hermann Patzinger, president of the Prussian Cultural Heritage Foundation, uh, who is also, I'm very proud, executive president of Europa Nostra, uh, one of the many European organizations that is behind this manifesto. And I want to mention also a few others, uh, uh, like ICOMOS, uh, like NEMO, like uh, um, historic, uh, European Historic Houses Associations, Future of Religious Heritage, Industrial Heritage, uh, Interpret Europe, uh, many, many organizations, and they are all in the audience. I see that we have a very, very large audience with us. So um, why I wanted after you to go to Berlin and to, um, to Hermann, because Hermann Patzinger, um, in the last two uh, months, Hermann, you, because you are the, uh, taking care of all the museums, extraordinary museums in Berlin and, and, uh, and more than Berlin, you are taking care of so much of European and world heritage in Berlin, and you had to close all of them. And now you are busy reopening them all for people in, after, I mean, in, in, in the process of the pandemic. So I think you have been firsthand sort of feeling uh, and the, the pressure and the immense, immense and heavy impact that uh, the pandemic has caused on the world of, of museums, cultural heritage, uh, cultural uh, artists, etc. So I would like to, as the commissioner mentioned, that heritage is it's part of our soul, our DNA. Um, what is it, in fact, the role of heritage? Why is it heritage so important for the healing of Europe and for being European? I think these are the two uh, first reasons that we have enlisted in this manifesto. I would like to hear your message to Europe on this Europe Day. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, hello to everybody and uh, of course, happy Europe Day to everybody also. I think this uh, commissioner, this was really a wonderful introduction, better impossible. Normally, we always have to try to convince politicians about our visions and, and messages, but uh, with you, it's, it, there's no need. I mean, you are really, you have this, as, as, as Nishka said, you have culture also in your soul. And I think this is very important and everybody felt this after your introduction. Well, in Berlin, of course, in 
in Berlin as in many cities, not only in Europe, in the world. I'm continuously having telephone conversations with museum responsibles all over the world. It's a really challenging time because indeed middle of March, we closed down all the museums and now next uh, Tuesday, we will start to reopen the, five, the first five museums in Berlin, Museum Island and on other places. And uh, of course, it's, we learned that it's much easier to close down than to, to, to open again, because of course there is still the wires going around and we still need uh, highest hygienic security. We have to prepare the museum entrances. Everybody, we need more guards so people keep the distances in the museum galleries. We have to buy plexiglass installations and so on and so on. So it's not as, as easy as one thinks to reopen again. But what is important, and it's also for us and for many other museums, we know now, now that, that with all the museums, which are closed during one month, we have a loss of two millions of euros. And for many other museums, it's also a similar situation. And when we now reopen, there is no tourism, there are only Berliners, but we do it for the people. We know perhaps we have even more expenses to prepare all these museums and not so many people will come. Also, there may not so many people come because say, with the crowds, we have an enormous problem to, to manage them. But I think people want to come back to the museums. And I think it's our duty also as cultural institutions to, to, to bring them other thoughts, to, to distract them, to see art, to enjoy art and so on. And what was mentioned in the beginning also by Harry, the digital transformation is extremely important because Happily, we had already a lot of offers, virtual tours to the museums. We had more than 200,000 objects which people can go uh, via the, the internet, the website of the museums and so on and enjoy information, uh, 40 virtual exhibitions and so on and so on. But nevertheless, we did more and it's necessary to do more to make really culture and heritage accessible. And I think this is uh, something which we will take with us from this crisis, which will remain. There's still much more has to be done that we can offer the visitor, uh, visitor until now. Because we are convinced that it's important, and I come to the point, healing Europe for the mental and intellectual well-being of our people and of our societies, this contact with culture and cultural heritage. And we have not only uh, 70 years Schumann's declaration, we have today also 75 years end of the Second World War, because not to forget the Russians signed one day later than the Western Allies, the 9th of May, and they are having this feast today. And I think... Uh, this is coming together and shows us again how complicated is our history and heritage is materialized history, history which we can see which, which, with which we are in contact, in contact every day. Uh, and this is important to make people feel again and be becoming aware again how complicated it was. Uh, President Steinmeier yesterday made an important speech and one of the phrases I most liked um, was that <clears throat> You can love Germany only with a broken heart. And I mean, you, you can transfer it. European history is so complicated. There are many broken hearts. And this is the responsibility which we have to bring it forward. And really for being European on the basis of this history, this is something which is very important. And what Harry mentioned also this de facto solidarity. Uh, perhaps I, I want to come back to this later. This is something which on the cultural heritage issue level this is working but we have really to bring it further to to the people to the politicians because i, I have the feeling in, in the field of politics there has to be more solidarity uh, within europe but we can go we can proceed and once i opened an exhibition together with my colleague michael piotrowski was seven years ago in the hermitage with trophy art from germany and at, at the opening there was our chancellor angela merkel and the russian president vladimir putin and in their opening speeches they said we see how well cultural heritage people in this case german and russians work together and we politicians can learn a lot from scientists and cultural heritage people like them, how well they can work together, even coming from different point of views. And this both Angela Merkel as well as Vladimir Putin pointed out. And I think this shows that we have not only on the heritage level, level on the overall level, we can do many things to bring solidarity in Europe forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, um, 
uh, dear Herman. Uh, so uh, from, I will pick up from that last point when you say we can inspire also the political leaders. So I would like to go to Zagreb uh, to uh, Minister Nina Obulen, uh, who also has the very uh, difficult task in these times to be the chair uh, of the, the, the committee uh, council of ministers and uh, there will be a meeting on the 19th of May. Uh, I very much hope, uh, uh, Nina, that you will transmit all these messages to your colleagues meeting on the 9th of May. And I would like now to, um, to give you the floor while expressing our solidarity with you because not only there was a pandemic, there was also a terrible earthquake uh, that has uh, uh, damaged a lot of cultural heritage in Zagreb, in the capital city. So there is enormous need for solidarity for endangered heritage in Europe today. So Nina, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Sanjka. And let me thank all your colleagues uh, who joined you in the network in preparing uh, this webinar, but also uh, the statement uh, that is going to remind all of us on the potentials and importance of uh, cultural heritage in all our reflections on what we have to do, what can do, and what we have to do uh, once the, we start uh, walking out from this pandemic. And thank you also for once again expressing your words of uh, solidarity. Uh, we appreciated very much that during the pandemic, when the earthquake had hit Zagreb and really made a lot of damage to our cultural heritage, uh, many colleagues from government, non-governmental sector, heritage experts offered their uh, solidarity and help, even if at this moment uh, any kind of mobility is still uh, not possible. Um, I would like to say that uh, in the past two months, even though in, if we are confined within our national borders, I have a feeling uh, that uh, we have been working and we have been exchanging at the European level. And this is important, and this is important to remind all of us, especially today at the Europe Day, that uh, we need, uh, when there is a crisis, uh, even if we are dealing with it, with many of the aspects of this crisis within our national uh, borders, we should never underestimate the potentials and the strength that we have when we work together. The ministers of culture under Croatian presidency joined on the 8th of April and uh, a week ago we issued a declaration uh, in which we uh, sent some strong political messages on both what we are doing nationally and what we believe that we can and should do at the European level. And I would like to say that this discussion will continue on the 19th of May. And I will be glad to uh, transmit not only uh, this message uh, that, uh, about this webinar and the initiative of the cultural heritage sector, but many other initiatives of uh, many international uh, European uh, platforms and non-governmental organizations and professional organizations that contributed with their reflection on in particular and uh, not only the uh, the need to deal with the crisis now but with their reflection what we can and what we should do uh, in the future. I would like to say that uh, the Croatian presidency has indeed been taking place in quite unusual circumstances. Croatia, together with the island, also this year uh, has the European Capital of Culture, another project that unfortunately, in many of its aspects, had to be uh, suspended. It, they are now slowly picking up. But I think we are today, we are joining to, together today uh, to send messages of optimism, of hope and our joint reflection on the future. So just like in uh, Germany, uh, last week we reopened museums in Croatia, also without tours, but we opened them for our citizens. We also opened libraries and bookstores. And I have to say, the first day we were all touched to see the queues in front of our libraries. People who were waiting uh, to, to get new books, to to, to get in their spaces, in the spaces of culture, 
in which they feel enriched as human beings, in which they feel that uh, uh, this is part of their lives just as any other uh, uh, part of their lives. I think that the declaration that you have prepared is uh, 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 indeed uh, tackling uh, 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 very important topics and is pointing to all of us uh, what we need to do in the future, even though the future is uncertain and we have to be realistic about that uh, in terms of uh, financing that is going to be available, in terms of our ability of the, as a sector to adjust to new normal. But uh, if there is a strength and innovation in our societies, it exists in the field of arts, culture, and heritage. And I think we have to pull our forces and uh, reflections and ideas together. And I'm glad that today we have the Commissioner Gabriel with us, who have been very, she has been very vocal throughout this period, uh, uh, sending messages of, of mobilization for different uh, European institutions and different uh, uh, networks. I would like to say that uh, and conclude uh, with a few uh, really um, very interesting coincidences. During the Croatian presidency in the month of February, just before the lockdown, we had a conference uh, as one of, one of the most important topics of our presidency was managing the risks in cultural heritage. No, we didn't have a crystal ball and we didn't know that the pandemic would happen, nor do, could we ever dream that we would together with pandemic have uh, a, uh, earth, the earthquake. But the conference took place in Dubrovnik in one of the first uh, quarantine uh, systems in Europe, just two or three weeks before uh, we started closing down. And today, on the 9th of May, the Vice President of the European Commission, Dubravka Šuica, was planning to launch the Conference on the Future of Europe in Dubrovnik. This is all going to be postponed, but our reflections on the future, future of Europe should not and cannot be postponed. So thank you very much for organizing this webinar and for mobilizing the community uh, across Europe to reflect jointly on our joint future. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Obolen. Thank you, dear Nina. Uh, and thank you for ending, in fact, for recalling that on this day in Dubrovnik, the Conference on the Future of Europe should have been launched. And I would like to believe that, in fact, this webinar is, in fact, our way to launch uh, from the point of view of culture and cultural heritage that conference for the future of Europe, because our voices ought to be very much present once this conference is launched. So uh, from Zagreb, I would again go, and from uh, the politician and a leader of the government, I would go to an incredible activist, a missionary of uh, cultural heritage, to Stéphane Bern, to uh, uh, your, your countryside in France. Stéphane, I have with me your book. It's a little bit, uh, le book, Sauvons notre patrimoine, Let's Save Our Heritage. It's, it's become a Bible for all people fighting for saving cultural heritage, especially in France. But the opening sentence of the concluding chapter of this book says, Europe has an important role to play for cultural heritage. So, Stefan, I know that you are very worried, like all we are, and that you have been in, in the news very much in, uh, in France in the last days, calling, calling for a new deal, new deal for cultural heritage. So, Stefan, can we do something together to get that new deal uh, for heritage in Europe? Well, thank you. And thank you, Sneska, to, to let me speak with, with among all the eminent personalities. I'm very, I should be very modest because, you know, I'm. I'm only the owner of a monument here in Le Perche. It's 45 uh, kilometers from Chartres, famous for the, the cathedral. But also I've been in charge by the French president of mission to restore the, the, the national heritage and working with the, the cultural minister. And also I have an, another European, uh, you know, my heart is European, and I, I just correct just Harvey because uh, Robert Schumann was 
born in Luxembourg. So I I, I say um, everything. My my be I'm also Luxembourgish. So I, I would like to to say a few words for the heritage in Luxembourg too. No, the the thing is, we've been fighting the. I'm I'm launching here in France the the. A sort of an appeal. We, we, we launch an appeal for a new deal. Why we need a new deal for national heritage or European heritage is because we have been hit but dramatically by the pandemic. Because uh, imagine all the restorers, the, the, the people who are conserv uh, conservators, the, the, the guides, uh, all the people who work on the, the patrimony they have been hit by this crisis they have no more work they can't they don't even have the means to 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 uh, the the uh, les moyens financiers financial means to 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 go through this difficult period so we we i've been asking that the president to open to reopen urgently the monuments it has been done yesterday he gave the okay for many um, sites, the Chateau de la Loire will be open uh, next week, for instance. And this afternoon here, the, 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 the police is coming to explain me how, because I want to open the monument here, how to deal with the, the you know, the gel, with the, 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 all the sanitary measures. We'll respect it. We have signed all the monument, we've signed uh, an agreement. But the monument is not only the thing because we reopen, but the touristic uh, season, it's, it's, it's broken anyway. I mean, we have to deal with it. The only thing I want to launch an appeal for, for the future, because remember, yesterday we, 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 we celebrated the 8th of May. And I remember the words of Sir Winston Churchill. He said, when someone came to him and said, we have to, to cut in, in the, the military budgets, he said, okay, why are we fighting for? It's for culture. We can't, we, we, <laughs> we need culture. We need the, the, the um, for, for the youth generation also. I mean, it goes together. We, I want to form the young generation for the patrimony of tomorrow because our past, as Maria Gabriel said it perfectly, better than I do. She said uh, that um, our soul is, comes from the past, but we have to prepare for the future. I mean, that after, after the last war, the first thing, the first symbol, we reopened the castle of Versailles, just to show that we, we need culture and our past is our future. Our past brings money for the future. I, um, I have only one example. It's my, my, my little village here. I want to let you know that when we open a monument here, like I do, it's also an, um, a restaurant opens and then um, an hotel. And we have, we have 10 shops here and they all live through our monument, our church, my college, and because, because it, it brings some activity. So when we speak about uh, national heritage, when we speak about monuments, we don't speak about uh, just uh, old stones. It's not something aerial, it's, it's, it's um, um, employment. You know, six persons are working here uh, with me. And also, uh, we, we have uh, all the, 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 I don't know how to say, the tailleurs de pierre, les charpentiers, the carpenters, all the, 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 the couvreurs pour les, pour les, les toits. And we, 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 all these, these métiers d'art would have disappeared if we don't have the monuments. So tous ces métiers d'art, they need us. And, you know, it's not people who have... Uh, uh, been um, protected by, by, by the social laws uh, through the pandemic uh, uh, crisis. They have no means to live. So we have to, to help them reopen the monuments with, with the, the, the safe measures, of course, but, but they, they need to work. They need to work. And above all, just one point, I know in France, we have the problem with the, you, you know, the, the uh, local elections. Uh, the mayors haven't been settled. They can't sign 
the papers to 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 <laughs> to restore the the uh, sculptures painters uh, and whatever so so it's difficult for it's difficult time for all the metier d'art so why um it, it's the reason why i launched the, the new deal we need all together in europe to say that there is one thing that unites europe i mean in these moments it's our cultural heritage i mean employment uh, i i know you all work very hard for it but there is one thing when when i speak with my country fellmen they say oh we have one link together it's our cultural heritage in the monuments in the castles in the countryside i mean i feel the same i feel european if i travel with baroque uh, from from sicily to russia i feel in family uh, we, we we all feel the same so i know our borders are closed i know that we 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 have just the right to to visit the monuments around 100 kilometers now for the moment but we we have launched uh, first uh, uh, hashtag cet été je visite la france so and and people are very fun they want to come now they are the at the, at the the gate and say well, wait until the, the end of May, but it will be there. But I'm at your disposal. I, I will finish with that. Uh, we launched the appeal now, a new deal for national heritage in Europe, because I want to help also the German uh, monuments uh, the, in Slovenia also. Uh, you know, I live in Greece part of my life, so I want to help them too. We, we are building a new mon monument in, 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 in the islands for, for, for restoring the monuments. So we, we are all in the same, uh, same bark. We are all in the same bark. Thank you so much. Thank you so much uh, for your for my English. You know, the poor the French <laughs> man, we don't speak very well English. You should be speaking more often English with us when we will take you more often when we go on, on, the, on the important missions for promoting because we need you are Monsieur Patrimoine de la France, mais also de l'Europe. And I hope you will accept to be the first signatory. I sign. Manchester. I have my pen, because I sign. So you will be number one of the uh, sort of people who will support. We want to open that for signature for all passionate professionals, owners, managers, things we do sign. Stefan, you have the honor and thank you for uh, accepting that honor to be the first signatory. And I hope that you will help us spread because you are one of the influencers and we need more influencers also of the public opinion for our cause. And so you clearly said, you know, we need a new deal or cultural heritage, but it needs to go on all levels. So yes, it is the national level, yes, it is the European level, but very much it is the regional and local level. And that's why I'm delighted that we have here the representatives of the Committee of the Regions and uh, somebody who is with us from Finland and, and who will be speaking, in fact, from a city from a little bit more than 30,000 uh, inhabitants. So I want to give the floor to the voice of the regions and the cities in Europe speaking from Finland. Yeah, all. Happy Europe Day. On background, you can see my hometown and you can see our city library. Uh, yesterday, we reopened our library. Well, um, this 9th of May is nothing like all previous ones. We are all focused on its present because all Europeans today need Europe more than ever before. The coronavirus crisis has struck hard, but it's not the end of the European project. On the contrary, it is an opportunity to relaunch a new Europe. As culture has been re uh, recognized as the key driver for strengthening the European identity and plays an essential role during and after crisis. It must have a more prominent place in the discussion on the future of Europe and in all plans to relaunch in the European economy post-COVID-19. 
Our cultural heritage promotes the European values and consolidates the Union's democratic foundations. It reinforces our multiply and complementary identities, local, regional, national and European. The COVID-19 outbreak has had a devastating impact on the cultural and creative sectors, on artists, artists and their audiences alike. At the same time, people have been able to survive the lockdown thanks to different improvised and novel expressions of culture, from screens right through to balconies and rooftops. This is why we call for immediate um, support to the cultural and creative sectors. The future actions must accelerate the digitalization of public services, establish an assistance program for small and medium-sized enterprises, and also devise a plan to help rural areas. Funding should be accompanied with the simplification of the procedures to access funds so that money reaches its beneficiaries more quickly. These uh, uh, sectors must be empowered to repair the damages the pandemic is causing. But the day after the pandemic must find these sectors in line with the European Green Deal, the European Pillar of Social Rights, and the Sustainable Development Codes, and the rule of law and democratic principles. At the same time, we must stop brutalizing our cultural heritage through unsustainable tourism. The Committee of Regions believes that a community investing in culture, education and sport creates also more health, welfare and safety. This simple fact holds true for a city or a village, its regions, a country and also the entire continent. This is also why We fully support your statement. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for being our ambassadors in the Committee of the Regions. We need all mayors, all governments and regions to join in, in this important movement. You mentioned also so important issues in our manifesto, importance for the greening of Europe, for the regenerating Europe. So we are pleading for, in fact, that heritage-led renovation, the regeneration of our cities, villages as well. So there can be a lot of jobs also created. So thank you, we shall be working together. Now, from the Committee of the Regions, of course, we go to the European Parliament, very important force, because if we want to achieve a new deal, we need to have the Parliament with us. And there is a fantastic person who is uh, um, leading the, the, the Culture Committee, uh, Sabine Verheye, from Aachen, and uh, I just want that quote fantastic. Uh, last week, you had a uh, culture and education committee. The commissioner was there. Thierry Breton was also there with you. And you uh, issued the statement, we need to save culture and values of Europe at all costs, whatever it takes, Luca. So, uh, Sabine, can we get the parliament very much to back up our audacious uh, proposals? Thank you very much. First, I would also like to say uh, Happy Europe Day. And uh, I think you could not choose a better day for your webinar than the 70 years anniversary of the Schumann Declaration. I think uh, Europe is much more than just an economical club. Uh, uh, and as Maria Gabrielle already said, uh, the heart, the soul of Europe is our culture, our common history, our common culture and cultural heritage is uh, like it was all already said uh, uh, the, the, the 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 stones of our history and uh, and our souls made visible because as we when we know our own history our own roots where we do come from our own culture and see 
the diversity, the richness we have in cultural diversity in Europe. And we see also in this diversity, all these things we have in common, our common history, the, the links we had in the past together, uh, taking a look that the cathedral in Cologne never would exist in that way when we did not have French architects who tried to reach the sky and to bring light into the uh, cathedrals, into the churches at that time, in, in the Gothic times. Uh, we had an exchange of culture throughout Europe through all the centuries. Uh, we are influenced by each other and to have the knowledge about that, to, to see that, to have the possibility to make these cross-border experiences today leads to the situation that we can learn from our past for the times now, but also bring it to the future like Maria Gabriel said, and I cannot support that more. Uh, and I think she had the best words to, to do that. Thank you for that, Maria. Um, I think uh, what's important now in the COVID-19 crisis uh, is that we see now how important culture, the, the culture and creative sector is, uh, not just for our economies, but also for the well-being of the people. If you are not able to go to a theater, to go to a concert, to go to a cinema, to, to enjoy uh, all our cultural uh, uh, identity, to visit a library. I, I, I'm always very impressed on the culture of, of, of libraries we have in Finland. Um, I think people now in the times of Corona saw when you lose something, when you are missing something, when you are not able to join, you see what you are losing. And I hope that people recognize now more how important our culture is for our daily life and also uh, for our well being. And uh, having said that, I think it must also be clear that in the programs we have to bring the cultural sector to forward again, uh, because the lockdown uh, was uh, creating a big damage to the cultural and creative industries, to the sector. Um, and I hope that we get. Uh, 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 an impact uh, to a, a re uh, um, renascimento uh, of this uh, uh, of the sector now after the crisis. What we have to do is to take a look what are the positive aspects we had in in this crisis. Looking to the digitization question, uh, I think many many um, uh, cultural. Uh, um, people or people uh, uh, and, and uh, offers in the cultural sector were made now uh, also in, in digital forms. Uh, but what we see there is uh, to do it for grant is uh, easy, but to get the right fair shares uh, in payment offers also so that the creative sector is reimbursed in a fair uh, way uh, is still uh, difficult so that we have to work on this in future digitization in a fair environment for creators. What we have to do too is to fight further, and that is what I say also to uh, uh, the Minister of Culture from Croatia, uh, because the Croatian presidency is at the moment, please uh, support us in fighting for a doubling of the Creative Europe budget, because uh, after the crisis, we need more money to bring the sector back uh, to the top. And uh, I think uh, our cultural heritage and our cultural diversity in Europe is the richness we have, like I said already. But what we also need is to have a good access uh, uh, to all the other programs too. And like it was said uh, by uh, Stefan Bern, um, it's not just the cultural uh, uh, building, it's not just the monument, it's not just uh, uh, the, the, the core, but it's also all these things that are uh, existing beside the restaurants, the hotels, the visitors, uh, uh, the, the identity that is brought by, by these things, but also the econ economical aspect of our cultural heritage uh, into other sectors. And that's the reason why we also need the support out of the structural development funds, out of the um, uh, FC, out of the uh, um, uh, funds that are set up now by the European Investment Bank and by the Commission, uh, that culture, the cultural and creative sector has an adequate access. But having said that, uh, we also have to take a look uh, because the cultural and creative sector is a very specific sector in many fields. And that's the reason uh, why we need programs that are uh, strictly adapted to, um, uh, to the sector so that uh, they can take part 
uh, in these programs, that they have a, a fair share in these programs. And that is what we are working for in the next weeks. And I hope that we, we get uh, the support uh, of the Commission, of the Council, and of every uh, uh, institution that can support us and uh, so that we can help the creative and cultural sector uh, to um, yeah, come back to the core of European policy. Thank you, Sabine. I think that you have already understood that you can count on all of us to help you. Whatever we had to make noise, to sort of make a critical mass of, of the people from the ground to help the parliamentarians, you to spread the, the, the sort of the constituency for the support for heritage, not just in the culture committee, but in many, many other committees. So I, from that, you pronounce the word rinascimento, uh, and that is the right uh, introduction to the last uh, speaker, um, Luca Jaillet. Uh, Luca, exactly two years ago, when you started as president, you launched the audacious appeal for the renaissance, for the reunaissance of Europe, and immediately said culture must be at the heart of it. Luca, do you still believe in that? Can we still achieve it? Zniezka, thank you so much for your passion, energy, and positive uh, investment in all these issues. You are uh, the force de la nature as I defined you in Berlin one year ago. And thank you to Europa Nostra, Europeana, for this uh, meeting today. And uh, absolutely many compliments for your statement, as I already wrote to you by mail this morning. I fully subscribe. Your statement is quite important today. The second one, everything has already been said by Sabine, so I have, I have to stop here what I have to say, because I can subscribe word by word, even the, the word Rinascimento, she has evoked. Yes, it's true. Two years ago, I launched my presidency in April 2018 with this uh, nice word, it's a combination of uh, Renaissance and EU, Renaissance. And uh, the subtitle was There a Sustainable Europe. And I've been, I, I think, the, the first uh, institution and the first president of such an institution to put under this slogan three pillars. One was a sustainable agenda, the second was peace, and the third was and is culture. I think no other institution, no other president has never put in such a clear way this. And, and I think, uh, I am still convinced today that uh, not only has already been said by, by many before me, Europe has been a cultural space before becoming a market and before becoming a political project and a political idea. And it is still a cultural space based on the incredible force of our diversity that met and built something together. And we need culture, we need culture, we needed culture two years ago, we need culture today, because we are not only to invent a new, a new paradigm of our development, we'll be based on this new balance between economic, social, and sustainability and the environmental. But for doing this, we need a narrative, and the narrative is created by culture, is generated by culture. And so if you want really to go to a renaissance, uh, sorry to say I am a lover of Americans, but I do not like the New Deal. I prefer an, a European term. So I would call this renaissance. I am more than happy than yesterday, the president uh, Charles Michel opening uh, the, uh, the State of the Union in Florence by virtual, of course, he has called, he has proposed officially to call the recovery plan for Europe uh, as not Plan Marshall, again American, but Plan de Gasperi for Renaissance. So I am more than happy and this idea is taken. I hope that we call more and more using this fantastic term that, yes, of course, has been generated uh, in Florence, in Tuscany, but Astra has become really an enormous force of change cultural, spiritual, economic, and political in Europe in the, in the, the passage between the Middle Ages and the modern Europe, and we need today a new renaissance. I was convinced two years ago, I am more convinced today. The second reflection I want to put has already been raised. We, we are not only naive about values, huh? about idea, about spirit, but also about the concrete content. I live in a city, Torino. Everyone knows the history of Torino. Torino was the capital of Fiat, was the capital of industrial revolution in Italy, has been the core of this dark, gray, metallurgical fabric of our economy. 
when in the 80s, in the middle of the 80s, 80% 80 of the revenue of the people living and working in Torino surrounding was based on hard industry. Today, 80% of the revenue of the people living and working in Torino is based on culture, tourism, and conference. So culture is also an enormous economic driver, as Stefan has told, as also other. We know that in Europe, culture represents today, although the data are not so defined, 4.2% of the GDP mobilized today 8.4 million of workers, represent 1.1 million of enterprise occupied in all the sector of culture. And in some countries, as mine, uh, Italy represented the 16% of all the industrial sector in culture in Europe, but Germany has a, low, uh, a lower number of, uh, of enterprise, but has the highest added value in the sector of culture. So we, this is also an economic force. And of course, has already been raised, this has been a sector largely affected by the crisis, perhaps more than others. Because we know that most of the people working in the cultural sector are independent, are precarious, so they lost everything. They continue to do their work completely on a voluntary basis with an absolute, completely loss of income. And the experience told by Herman before about the, uh, the museum in, in, in Berlin is the same as being represented to me by the director of the muse Royal Museum in Torino. Enrica Pagella, she told me, we're completely closed. We have lost a lot of uh, revenue for the project we had. So we had to see also this economic driver of our society. It was clear yesterday, it has to be more clear today. But last but not least, uh, I think there is also another reflection. I, I'm very happy that uh, Sabine has already raised this, uh, and also some others, because uh, uh, these two months, it's, it's only two months, but these two months has changed radically our life. And this is one aspect that has been completely lost and forgotten by the womb that has managed this crisis. I haven't seen a psychologist in any urgency team established by our head of state and government. And if you uh, listen to the psychology, they said that the impact on the psychology of people elderly, family, children, locked down without contact with a similar for months, without capacity to be together, closes, and also physically close. So people now are feared. They are feared to infect others or to be infected. We are keeping social distancing, but we need hugs. We need direct relation. We have been locked down. We have lost most of our liberties. We are now again divided by borders, not only between countries, but even between regions in, in our countries. We are anxious. We, we are completely lost in what will happen. If you have to travel through Europe or through Italy, you don't know what are the rules. We are obliged to know a lot of norms. We, we went back in the Middle Ages of uh, the several capital and village state, each of one was establishing its rules. And these create uh, an enormous anxiety and the lack of trust and distract the social fabric. So we urgent need to rebuild the spirit, not only the economy. We urgent need to rebuild this social cohesion. We urgent need to feed a spirit of daring to dream. We urgent need to reconstruct trust, a new sense of belonging, a new sense of being part of the same community a new sense of care, a new sense of compassion, but also a new emotional intelligence to mobilize the energy. And now a new sense of fraternity to accompany this new normality. It's true, we are going, we are entering in a new normality and it will stand for some long time, not only for a few weeks or a few months. So I think they conclude, and I was also very shocked, I have to say, very, very emotional this morning, early morning, when I read integrally the speech of uh, the president of Germany, Stenmeier, I was really emotional. It's a strong speech, one of the strongest I read in the last month, and I strongly advise everyone to read. And this idea of broken hearts is really very, very strong. Culture has an enormous untapped potential today, more than ever, to become 
today, even more than yesterday, a unifying and mobilizing force to relaunch, reconstruct, and regenerate, a word of your manifesto, our social fabric after the pandemic. That is, has to be a priority. So fully support to the Commission, Maria Gabriel, for her statement, fully support to the Croatian presidents, also the very good statement that they have read, fully support with the parliament, fully partnership with the Commission of the region, and fully support for all the real actors of this fight and challenge, and uh, you are the real forefront of this fight. But we need this more than ever. We, can, we cannot live without a soul. We are not only living by bread, but we need also the spirit. And culture is what makes us alive. Grazie Luca for this very, very emotional, inspiring, passionate uh, plea pour la Renaissance. And uh, you spoke about the new fraternity. This is the moment to remind that this year is the 250th anniversary of the birth of Ludwig van Beethoven. It was Beethoven who added one word, one line in Schiller's Ode to Joy, saying, not this tone, let's change the tone. Let's change the narrative. Let's change the, what we are. There. So it is exactly our friend who is in the audience, Georges Chaminet, who has been speaking about that on a Berlin summit. So we indeed read, need to change that tone and we need to place and, and play what, like, like you have said, uh, Luca, culture is a great asset. And Stefan, I'm sure that you will pass the message to President Macron, la renaissance de l'Europe par la culture. I think he would like that. So this is your, if we get with also the heads of States to join the movement, that is great. Now, I realize there is so much passion. There is, and I know that there is, a, many people have been sending the, uh, the, 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 the questions, but I am first looking at you. We can go on for a few moments, but I know I'm looking first to the uh, commissioner, Gabriel. It's already very generous. Can you stay a few more minutes or, or you have to run to another? No, okay. For, so we want to give you um, the, the, the floor, um, the but I first want to uh, ask Harry, just to uh, give us the gist of all the questions and the reactions that the audience, and I see that we have 450 people still uh, uh, in, in, in the room with us, and nobody has left. So, Harry, what is the, uh, what is the vibe in the room? Well, I would say the vibe is uh, extremely positive to work together uh, in the spirit of the manifesto. I think we've seen a lot of uh, comments in that direction. Uh, of course, there's, there's a, an immense amount of questions and, and we're sorry that we can't answer them here. But uh, what I can say, Schneska, is that um, we will be looking at this in a lot more detail and we will feel that where, wherever we, we feel that's necessary. But we had over 100 questions and literally from all over the world and, and from Europe. So I think it, it was a fantastically engaged audience. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Hari. Um, so I would like now to sort of uh, uh, see um, first, uh, you know, Commissioner Gabriel. After all this, I would say uh, outburst uh, at the same time of worries and concerns and, you know, of the fears of where the world is now, but also of sort of hope hope and expression of solidarity. Um, what are the sort of, what are you taking with you uh, when you are going to speak to your uh, fellow uh, commissioners uh, um, uh, in charge of various important portfolios? Um, you, the commissioner of the hearts, but alas also of the broken hearts. And Harry, I hope you can send the link to everybody to the speech which has been uh, mentioned of President Steinmeier. I really think that we should all read that and reflect about that extremely historic speech that he made yesterday. So, uh, Commissioner Gabriel. Uh, Sneska, you know me, I'm, I'm quite pragmatic. So for me, at least when I will continue to speak with my fellow colleagues, it will be three main messages. First of all, of all uh, we need proper communication on this issue. Definitely we need to popularize and to give visibility of this extraordinary richness of this soul and identity of, of Europe. So I, I think that this, this initiative today is a great example what, what is our way forward. And that's why my first wish is really now uh, uh, every one of us to contribute to transform uh, the manifesto into concrete actions. Second, second thing where well, I, I will talk to my other colleagues is definitely we need to build synergies. 
we need to take example because we already said that cultural heritage is our bridge between our past, present and future. And we need to bring that into concrete actions tied to our common actions with the other commissioners. Synergies on one side first for me because I will not ask somebody else something that I'm not able to deliver myself. First synergies between Creative Europe, Horizon Europe, there will be a new cluster on culture and European Institute of Innovation and Technology with a new kick again with the culture and creative sectors. Second, we need here to work with our other colleagues because the crisis has shown us how this flexibility is needed by our member states to help the sector, to use the European Regional Development Fund, the U to use the European Social Fund. We are talking about cohesion, that cultural heritage as the basis of the cohesion of European continent. And our funds should be really used for local communities because we said it very clearly. It's not only about something abstract and values, it's the heart of our European project, but it's something concrete for the daily lives of millions of people. And we need here more synergies and more concrete actions. Third, my message is to, to my colleagues and to all the others, it will be please take example. Take example from this crisis, how the sector has shown us that innovation, creativity, that's something that never new technologies or machines will replace. And for me, that's why this idea of the platform created by the sector, for the sector, that was launched this, this week, thanks to, to Creative Europe and our FLIP project, it's another initiative in order to show that our cultural and creative sectors, our cultural heritage, they help us not only to find solutions, but they help us to have better future and to be more resilient as a society, as an economy. So for that will be my, my message now. Let's transform together this manifesto uh, into concrete actions. And yeah, it's Europe days. Again, in, during this Europe day, let's say that the best heritage, the heritage of our founding fathers is heritage that are living, that is in us, with us, and cultural heritage is really the best proof that the spirit of founding fathers are with us. Now it's time really to show that we, the heritors, we are able not only to revive the project, but to build and to have the project on the next level, which is definitely not possible without cultural heritage. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Gabriel. We can see that you are the right woman on the right place at the right time. And you know that you have all of us uh, with you. And, uh, and I think that is something that we have also, one of the questions that in fact I also got was, uh, so the what can, it's not only that we are asking from the European institutions, uh, give us money. It is really treat us as the partners and the inspirators, as the ones who are contributing to all the solution, including the green transition, tr digital transformation, uh, um, regeneration, all these, all these important challenges. We are part of the solution and we are the resource. I know that, the, so, so that is something. And one of the questions was, could we not imagine to have a pledging exercise like you earlier this week? You have done extraordinary uh, uh, with, with, uh, with President Ursula von der Leyen, uh, pledging and calling the whole world to contribute to the uh, finding the vaccines, diagnostics and treatment, and the cultural world is supporting you. But could we imagine, and there is, uh, 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 Stefan is there, who is specialist in, of course, rallying the public, to have such a pledging exercise with the world of culture, the artists, the heritage, two sides of the same coin, would, would, we, we can, together make something extraordinary and people will support uh, also financially things. So this is one of the questions that I have got. Do you think Sneska, that Sneska, I think that it's just a question of time because you know, allow me just to remind that even now for this global pledging conference uh, concentrated on vaccines, treatments and diagnostic tests, the world of culture and creative sectors, this has shown enormous and extraordinary solidarity. But by the way, it's not finished because the end that will be 23rd of May 
and you will be surprised to see what is the great contribution of culture and creative sectors. So I think that it's just a question of time to have the same on an inverse order because what is important it's not to have big events where you claim your support what is important for me it's every day every day to say thank you to our cultural heritage to our, to our cultural and creative sectors because without this we just not continue to live as europeans as we are proud to be no, fantastic. So, Stefan, I think you have heard. So, we are, we are going to stage an extraordinary European uh, online event for the world of, of, of culture and cultural heritage in particular. So, and the digital, of course, uh, with Europeana, with all the people working in the digital um, uh, the sector. But we must sure, because that is one of the questions that we were receiving, uh, Harry, that people are afraid that only the big guys you know, the big, you know, the, the, the Herman, your uh, Russian cultural foundation, that they, you have the capacity for the digital transformation. What about the small places? Uh, as, as Stefan said, it's, it's, most of the heritage is in the villages, in the small places with less than 2,000 inhabitants. So we have to make sure that all that is a sort of embracing as, as much people in rural areas and, and in wider areas. I know, Herman, perhaps you want on that point to, um, to say something, whether, whether we can do more for that equality uh, of, of access to uh, of heritage to everybody. I know this is of course very important, it's crucial, but again what, what the Commissioner said, uh, congratulations, this is very encouraging because this solidarity which we feel in this crisis on several levels, now in this webinar I feel a solidarity with the politically responsible persons in the Commission, in the Parliament, people like Luca, many others, solidarity with us, the actors in the heritage field. So we are, we are on the same track. And this is, I think, very, very important. And it's indeed, it's not only money to make things possible. It's knowledge transfer, talking about what Snezhka asked, the, the digital world to transfer knowledge and make other things possible for others, which are not the big actors, but can contribute a lot, and, and to have a common strategy. And um, once I... I to, Many of you quoted people. Uh, I, I want us to, to, to end with a quote. Another great European, Felipe Gonzalez, once I had the opportunity to talk with him six or seven years ago, and he said, well, Europe always does a great step forward after a huge crisis. And perhaps this is something which we take with us. And my only wish would be at the very end, we, would, we should not need another big crisis really to bring forward cultural heritage for European cohesion, because heritage and cultural heritage, and also it's my soul, my life, and everything, and my job. But for me, it's just a transmission, a, a, a vehicle really to bring Europe forward. This is the important thing. And let's not wait for another big crisis to make a big step forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Herman. Um, Sabine wants to say something, but I see that uh, Luca has to leave in two minutes. Can Sabine, I just give the floor to Luca. Luca, your final... Sabina, uh, Sabina, Sabina first. Uh, uh, ladies uh, first. Uh, Please take Luca, I, I have still some time. No, I, I want to say two, two, two things. First, to, to, um, to the director of the Prussian Foundation, two crises in 10 years is large enough. We do not need a third one in the in the last uh, la next year so we have to to take lesson and to do what we have to do from this the second one there was a call from from a pledging uh, i i've been of course absolutely impressed of the, of the volume of people that have contributed after the enormous fire of notre dame in, uh, in in paris it was enormous the people that contributed i remember when there was uh, the earthquake uh, in l'aquila the president of the parliament at this time, Tajani and others, launched the same issue, but there was absolutely a lower participation in financing and the, the Cathedral of Lacri, what was a very old one, has still to be restored. I don't think that anyone has still now launched something to help the, the, the friends in Zagreb, in Croatia, to restore the, the heritage that has been damaged by the earthquake. And so I want to say that if we go in this direction, we also needed we also to think to all the minor places all around Europe, and not only to the heritage, because we have also the people working the theaters, the people working the cinema, the people working the street art, in the small library, in the small villages, because culture is all this diversity that make the large part of our people alive 
and mobilize our people. So we have to think to something more large and more capable to reach all the corner of our, of our society. For the rest, I already said so much in my previous intervention, so I will leave now very happy the, the, the floor to, 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 to Sabine. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Luca. Absolutely. The world of culture, the art and heritage, it's two sides of the same coin. And we need also, when we speak about solidarity, to work much more together in order to show how big we are. Because, and that's Sabine, <coughs> what uh, would like to add something? Yeah, I think, I think what, what we have to see is that the contemporary arts, that the arts we make in future will be our cultural heritage uh, in a few years. So uh, we have to, to always to look on both sides. Uh, people who are creating uh, cultural content, cultural issues today, who are building new types of, 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 of cultural heritage, uh, but also to see uh, that what is in the past. And I want just to support Luca on this point where he said uh, for the big uh, um, uh, well-known uh, monuments, uh, it's quite easy to get support from a broad public because everyone identifies somehow uh, himself with, uh, uh, with, with, with such uh, uh, parts of history. Uh, but to, to support all these small uh, uh, cultural sites, all these small cultural heritage parts, uh, not even those in stone, but also cultural heritage in form from, from traditions, from festivals, from, from other uh, kinds of, of, of cultural heritage that is there, uh, there it's much more difficult to get the, the support of a broad public. Uh, and that's that's uh, something where we I think should work on also in future that we get together in cooperation with with creatives, artists, designer, art or artisans, uh, but also um, with research and, and exhibition partners from other cultural institutions and collections to have a, a kind of digital exchange platform. Also, perhaps also to to make a kind of crowdfunding for for such uh, uh, issues, but to to offer something on the one hand. Uh, and on the other hand, to bring something back also to the cultural sector. Um, to have, um, I think it's also important uh, to, to set up a digital platform which offers solutions to the eminent practical problems, for example, in cross-museum collaboration uh, uh, that is still lacking on the European level. The Horizon program uh, will establish a European collaborative space, including but not limited to the cultural heritage, which, which uh, also includes cloud services. And this idea should be implemented as swiftly as possible. I know that Maria Gabrielle is working quite hard uh, at the moment also on a platform for culture and creativity, uh, uh, together with uh, stakeholders and also with uh, Europeana and others, uh, where you have also the possibility for an exchange, um, also where the cultural sector can inform itself which possibilities do I have? Uh, when I have uh, people from the creative sector or people organizing or uh, working in cultural heritage, they very often don't know uh, where to go to to get uh, financial support for their work, especially now in the crisis, because we have so many levels, uh, political levels and deciding levels um, uh, in, in this crisis at the moment. We have the local level, we have the regional, we have uh, national level, European level, uh, where funds might be available also for the cultural sector, but it's it's a kind of uh, of a, of a uh, that you see uh, in Germany we say uh, for lauter Bäumen den Wald be seen to have meant too many trees to see the wood. Um, uh, I don't know how to translate that into English, but uh, we have so many uh, possibilities at the moment. But to get a clear and easy accessible overview, that is something uh, I think uh, Maria Gabrielle is working together with the Commission and. Uh, they get the full support also uh, of the European Parliament on establishing such a platform. Perhaps she can say something to that. Thank you. Thank you, Sabine. Uh, Hari is sending me messages. Sneska, Sneska, can we, we, we could go on the whole day, but, you know, try to, try to bring it to an end. Uh, I want to keep Stéphane uh, for the dernier mot. Hein, Stéphane, c'est quelque chose qui vous va très bien, le dernier mot. But just before le dernier mot, uh, uh, Nina Obulian, Minister, uh, Anna, uh, do you want to, to add your, your, your final word and then we keep uh, Stefan for the end with all his energy? Yes, thank you. Um, thank you, Sneshka. Um, I will, first of all, I fully agree with what uh, uh, all the speakers said and I would just like to conclude with my reflection on uh, where we are in this crisis. 
because I'm sure each one of us as individuals or in our different positions, responsibilities have lived through different kind of crises. And somehow you knew where you are, what more or less needs to be done and where you are going to be. This is an unprecedented situation in a way that there is so much uncertainty, so much is unknown and people are afraid and they are, uh, uh, they are worried for their lives, for their future, for the future of their communities. And I think we have to strengthen, we have to strengthen each and every individual in our society. Uh, we need to give a sense of hope and optimism to our citizens, uh, to uh, our, uh, 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 to especially those who are working in the fields of culture. And this is our responsibility, and this is our role. This is not a, a crisis like any crisis before. We know that we will struggle for a long time, time to overcome all the consequences, economic, social, as someone said, eco economic, uh, psychological as well. But what I want to point is that in the field of culture, arts and heritage, there is this creativity and creativity is what moves us forward. And this is one of the fundamental reasons why we have to be visible, we have to be present. And as you said in your manifesto, we have to offer what we have as a capacity, as a potential for the future that is going, not going to be easy. But we, if we work together and if we join our forces together and if we learn from each other about responses and the overlook for the future, we will be able to overcome the crisis sooner. The Croatian presidency did and is doing its part in different sectors. Our ministers of education joined forces to re reflect on how we are organizing the school system, the health ministers, the transport ministers, and I'm glad that the ministers responsible for culture and media also joined their forces in reflection on the current situation and the future. And of course, I'm looking forward to passing on to our German colleagues and the German presidencies that will have to keep us going as Europeans uh, through this crisis in the coming months. Thank you once again for launching the initiative for the manifesto and of course for the uh, opportunity to join you today in this webinar. Thank you, Minister Oboljan. Thank you, dear Nina, for this message of hope. Uh, and um, uh, I would like uh, to see, let me, let me just see, I hope that this message of hope also the cities and regions will uh, pass further this message, but I think we just need to have that, uh, uh, Madam uh, Commissioner, yes, I'll give you the floor before Stefan, I want Stefan to, to finish, <laughs> yes. Quite important that Stefan has the, the last word, but uh, I would like just to give uh, four concrete examples because we have online users and now thanks to digital we can really express our solidarity especially for the local dimension of cultural heritage. Uh, first again uh, to remind you that uh, since the last Tuesday uh, the platform for the sector and by the sector Creatives Unite is operational please uh, that's my demand contribute we need your ideas we need your creativity Second thing, uh, to promote our cultural heritage in action project because here our intention is really to flag local and regional examples of cultural heritage being the source of social and economic cohesion. And the last two examples, because I'm responsible for Joint Research Center and together we developed on one side a map-based interface, story maps, to allow, that allow us to explore heritage initiatives in their surroundings such as the european capitals of culture or european heritage label sites and cultural heritage is telling our story let's give them more chance and final there is another application culture gems and i think that thanks to all of us we can really send a strong message to our local communities to all these people that they are fighting every day that thanks to cultural heritage, we can, we can be stronger after this crisis. So just for small examples, I hope with added value, but uh, that, I think that it's important because 
We have more than 1,000 online users. I hope that we'll all use these applications too. Thank you. It all shows what a force we are. And if I may add, because I am speaking from the Netherlands, but my soul and roots are from the Balkans, from Belgrade, from Serbia. So thank you also, European Commission, for what you are doing for culture and cultural heritage in the Western Balkans. Thank you, Minister Obulen, because uh, Croatian president has done a lot for engaging Western Balkans. And what better than using culture, education, cultural heritage to, to really get also the reforms on values, because not only economy, and we know that we're not with money putting in economy, it's also money putting in value-based transformation of the societies. So thank you also on behalf of that region uh, for all what you you can do and we can do much more so um, to end to end uh, um, Stefan Stefan how are we going to do how are we going to do to get that uh, renaissance uh, of, uh, of, of Europe Europe through culture and cultural heritage oh I, I take the word from Luca it's uh, <clears throat> it's a new renaissance it's uh, um, it's very important it's what we call here in the region we, 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 we have signed uh, uh, agreements, it's called New Renaissance. So uh, we forget the New Deal, it's a New Renaissance, I agree with it. And you know, the, the, the other thing is, uh, the Minister of Culture in Croatia said, we, we need to give hope. Hope, but also to, uh, it's local hope. I mean, uh, I don't speak in, in a big city, I mean, little village, and I, I take all the words from Sabine, she's right we need to give hope to the local citizens who need desperately to understand why europe is such a big uh, monster and how it it works for them on local uh, sites and I, i've launched an idea yesterday to the uh, i gave the the idea to the president of the banque des territoires uh, who is working very hard with the the, the french government it said we need um, a mobile apply, a mobile application. Why? It's, you know, we have around me. You can find bars, you can find a service station, but we, we, we can't find on mobile, we can't find, we, we couldn't find the, the, what to visit locally. And the idea I want to explore is, can we on, on a mobile uh, application find what monument or little cultural site we can visit, and then how to know if it's red, orange, or green uh, um, about the, the, the sanitary rules, the, the, uh, just to know if it's a lot of people or not a lot of people, uh, then I, I can go somewhere else around me. Uh, we have to be innovation. We have, uh, I, I'm, I want to work with the, the White Call School to, to imagine what, what we can do with our mobiles to, to just to, to make culture and, and, and heritage, national or uh, historical heritage on the top. So I'm working here with the medias. I think communication is something very important. Uh, um, you've noticed I'm better for communication in French than in English. It doesn't matter. I will go on. <laughs> but you know, it, the French people they now they, they call me Mr. Patrimony. They uh, every day uh, I tell them our hope is through our past. But I mean, it's not something uh, belonging to the past. It's our future, and we have to promote it for the young generation. I want. I want to help the new generation to understand that monuments or culture, the culture is next door. I mean, a little church, a little, a little site, a historical site, it's next door. Uh, you are very lucky if you are a big city yeah. surrounding by, by treasures. But when you live in a little village, you just have the church or a castle uh, uh, two kilometers from from you or a little fontaine or a, little, a bridge, something, beauty. We need beauty, we need, we need, we need to understand bridges in Europe. So Thank it's you less... for using the word beauty. I think this is le dernier mot, la beauté. I think la bellezza. That is what we need to talk more in Europe about that. You, you rarely hear that in the speeches of, of, of uh, EU leaders. So let's indeed, 
change the tone like Beethoven had told us uh, in this extraordinary year. Let's be audacious like uh, Robert Schumann has taught us. Uh, let's be, let's use the crisis like Jean Monnet or, or, uh, or, or Felipe Gonzalez were telling us. They use this crisis and really uh, uh, not uh, take another, uh, 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 wait for, for another one. Europe said that Europe needs to do something big on big things. If art and heritage are not big things for Europe, I don't know what it is. So that means that Europe must do big for cultural heritage. And because it is important for the locals, not because it's important just for Brussels, it's because the link between the local and the European. I think that is also important, the message for the region, cities and villages. It is not a contradiction between the two. Europe will, in, uh, in your village, Stefan, not in Brussels, also in Brussels. Uh, and, and, and so what I just now, because it's the time of audacity and of creativity, why can't we have a Lotto du Patrimoine uh, at the European level, launched in September during the European Heritage Days? Why don't we have on the Europe Day Perhaps for today, for today is too late, but as of next year, every heritage place in Europe will put up the European flag and say, I'm proud to tell the European story. So, Stefan, Commissioner, all of you, perhaps we can do it. It's very easy. We, many, many more people have to proudly communicate that we are European, in addition to be proud of our local and regional and national identities, the concept of multiple identities. So I just want to read, uh, Harry has shared with me one wonderful comment that we received. We still have 373 people in the room. Somebody said, thank you very much for the initiative and the technical response. I can follow everything despite I am ill. Happy to feel all your energy to fight for cultural heritage and all the people linked to it. So I think this is so moving and, and demonstrate the power of heritage for the healing Europe and for being Europe. So thank you all for being with us and see you soon in another webinar and another meeting that we will organize all together. Thank you.